Well, hello, everyone. This is TechSags Rewind here on TechSags Radio, episode 2857. How often do I do the numbers, guys? Not very often? Mm -mm. No. 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 And thank you for answering. Start Nobody eight. else wanted to be a part of the conversation. That's all right. These are the fan show, guys. I was like, what numbers? <laughs> what number? <laughs> uh, the over. I'm taking the over. Uh, Hunter's here. You got Kelly here. You got Matt here. Guys, we had a fun show. Um, we talked about it on the fan show, but everybody give me a quick answer. One thing you have to see on Saturday. Throw it deep. Haynes King. Fast start. Fast start. All right. So that is the electric kind of a journalism you got during the fan show. We really appreciate our guys. OB talk college football expansion. We didn't get into that. But yeah, it looks like it's coming. Buy, sell, or lease with Stephen McGee. He bought a lot of things. He sold some things, and he leased some things. That's kind of obvious with the name of that segment. We had uh, Ryan Swope on, getting it done with Ryan Swope, talking about receivers. And around college football with Aaron Torres from Fox Sports. Why is everybody looking at me? Because you're the host. <laughs> Awkward. He's handsome. Oh, this is true. I got to shave, though. <laughs> Let's go to the video. And then also, the college football expansion, uh, playoff expansion, which could be uh, voted on as early as tomorrow, 12 teams, and we might see that in 2024. Um, couldn't get here fast enough. I still think that they should go to 16 yeah. or leave it at 8. But, if, but I'll take 12, even though you're giving four teams the advantage of not having to play – the same amount of games to win a championship, and I just don't think that's right. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. Um, I, look, I'm just happy it's going to be expanded. I no, like I the idea. Yeah. I still want to fix the bowl system, and I don't know what that means. I don't know if bowls need to be part of your playoffs and like you know, your, uh, maybe when you get to the Elite Eight, if you will, now those are bowl games, and then you have some other bowl games as well sprinkled in. I don't know. I don't know how you fix it. I know you hated my idea of bowl games before the season. It wasn't my idea. I just liked it. I here's why I don't like incorporating the bowls with the, uh, the playoffs. With the playoffs, I don't mind the last two. You know the last, you know two rounds, the championship and the mm -hmm. semifinals. But at some point, you just start eliminating normal fans from having a chance to go. How many? How many trips do I? Yeah. Are you expecting your fans to take? Hundred percent. Agree with that. So, so keep, keep them on campus as it, long as you can. The higher seated team plays on campus. Yeah. You know, I, I thought to myself too, like the NCAA tournament, how difficult that must be. And, and we went through it just with one location as a, as a company for the College World Series. It is hard to travel for that long no, and, that, and, and that kind of commitment. And the expense and, you know, just normal people can't go. And maybe you can say, well, they can't go now. Well, some now. Okay, maybe it's so expensive, but if you really want to go, you can save up and you say, okay, I'm going to put this trip on my card and it's going to be worth it, but I'm going to have to pay it off and all those yep. things. What are we buying, Stephen? I'm going to buy a chain. Yeah. You can buy the same thing, OB. Yeah, well, I've been, you know, <laughs> I've been buying them all, all year, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that, I think there's, a, there's enough stock in uh, Devon a chain for a lot of people to buy it. By the way, I'm buying Evan Stewart scoring the first touchdown of the game. It's going to be a long mm. one. That's, that's what I'm buying. So starting, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Let's, uh, what are we selling? I'm going to sell this offensive line week one. I think there's a lot of unknowns up there right now. And some question marks. You lose some good players. Um, the, the best known you have is, is Fathery, right? And he's a great football player. Saw that last year. But who do you have to go with him? Yeah. And that can ultimately be some struggles, and I think a factor that Haynes' legs can get used to help correct mistakes up front. OB? Uh, I'm trying to think of something, you know, witty and everything, but uh, <laughs> I really can't because I don't know what to sell. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to sell the uh, idea that that a and M that next year is A&M's year. And I've been saying, well, why, why, not why, not why not this year? Because, yep. yeah, you have a, a, a quarterback that's in his first – Real year as starter, where well, Alabama had a quarterback in his first real year as starter last uh, year. I'm going to sell something not A&M related. I'm selling Notre Dame. They're going to get destroyed by Ohio State. I think it's going to be a bloodbath. I do. I think they're going yeah. to lose by 25-plus like points. It's going, to, it's going to be bad. Maybe not 25, but it's, it's going to be a blowout. What are we leasing, guys? You know what? I, I'll lease uh, this defensive line. You know, I think that there's a lot of talent on that. I mean, obviously, as deep as this defensive line's ever been from a recruiting perspective, um, inside, outside, but getting production, right? That's the ultimate name of the game is to not just sign five-star players, but get those guys out on the field and uh, to get, get production. Yeah, you know, s s since you did that, because I was going to go 
there with pass rush. But since you did that, I'll do something different. And I'll say I'm leasing Evan Stewart. Uh, nothing against Evan, but the fact of the matter is he's a freshman. Now, is he going to be the freshman that's going to come on and play like Christian Kirk? Or is he going to be the freshman that comes on and just isn't a non-factor like DeMond Demas? Yep. You know, two five-star previous guys. I think he's going to be more of the impact that Kirk was. But we thought there was going to be so much for Demas, and it didn't show up. So I'm just going to lease it for now. I'm going to lease Jake Johnson for very similar reasons because I think he's going to be a, a, a special player, and we may even see it this weekend. Uh, but I think you have some options at tight end that you can kind of ease him in. And same with Donovan and, and Theo as well. They're going to, it's going to take some time to get them going. I think Jake, though, has the, the upper hand. We have not spoken about what this team could look like in, I don't know, since when. So what do you think, man, with some of the changes – Haynes being the guy, you know, got some new players out there. Evan Stewart is obviously one of the hot names out there. How do you how do you think this offense is going to look in 2022? You know, I think it's going to be a, a good year. I, I think that we've got uh, – I was pumped to hear Haynes King was named the starter. I think, uh, I think that that was the right call. Uh, you know, obviously leaning on experience, you uh, – you can't go wrong with that. And as far as a quarterback and a receiver goes, already having a couple of years worth of chemistry uh, always helps. I mean, it helps tremendously. I don't think people even realize how much it helps just, you know, from just the little things, fundamentals, going out, running routes, you know, seven on seven in the summer, building that chemistry, getting to know each other and same phase is, is huge. Um, so, the fact that Haynes is the guy, he, I mean, he's obviously very we, – we've seen, uh, you know, he can get out of certain situations, great on his feet, can extend plays. I think – and he's a competitor. So, uh, I'm excited. I'm anxious to see what he can do. And um, I, I think it's going to be an exciting year. Uh, we've got, obviously, a tough schedule, but uh, we've got some weapons on that offensive, on that offensive side of the ball. Talking to Ryan Swope here on Tex Ags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. If you want to text in the show, you can do that on the AMB text line, 979-693-1150. So this kind of came up with Stephen, but I, I want to ask you, why, why does it take young receivers a little bit longer to get acclimated to the college football game as opposed to other positions? I know it takes young players at everything, defensive line, O-line. like it, They all take a little while, but I think with receivers specifically, sometimes we see that growth happen in that second year more than we see right away. I think a big thing and a key that coming from high school, college, that transition is, is uh, you're coming from a probably, you know, a very simple playbook in high school. Uh, you're not used to really reading defenses. You're, you're running with the, you know, based on what the play says, you're, you're not, uh, there's not too much, uh, IQ and knowledge that goes into uh, how to how to read defenses and coverages and uh, so I think that that first year as a receiver is huge. You get thrown into it when you your brain is is running a thousand miles, uh, so you really can't play up to your 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 ability and, and speed that you'd like to because you're just trying to process everything. At least for me, when I was that first year, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't play. I only had, I think, 100, 100 something yards receiving, but I was constantly just trying to get better and watch film and understand, uh, you know, how to read defenses and shifts and, and uh, you know, little things like that that you would never think of. And I think that that first year's receiver, like you see some of these guys that come out from high school to college and make that transition so easy and seamlessly. Um, it's amazing because it does require quite a bit of time in the film room and just a basic understanding of, of these defenses and what they give you. And, and so you throw a freshman kid out there that's never done that. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time for him to get comfortable with it. That makes sense. AT, I could be talked out of this one, but I feel the same mm -hmm. way about Oregon and Georgia. But I also recognize we don't really know who this uh, Georgia team is. We don't really know much about Oregon either. But to me, SEC Pac-12, uh, Georgia being Georgia, and Oregon just having—I just sorry—I just don't I don't buy it yet. Um, are you on the same page well, on that one? Do you think this one's going to be a, a tough one for Oregon as well? 
I'll say this. I, I think Oregon defensively probably has as much talent as any team that Georgia will face in the regular season. I mean, Mario Cristobal did recruit at an elite level. The reason I can't predict it to be close, the reason that I can't predict it, predict the outright upset is two words. It's Bo Nix, right? Like, like, and I know again, another one where they haven't officially named a starter, but Kirby smart said the other day, Oh, I know who's starting. And so listen, we know, you know, you talk about, who this guy that we know who Bo Nix is. We not only do we know who Bo Nix is, we know who Bo Nix is specifically against Georgia and it never ends well. Uh, Just for fun. I went back and looked it up. Uh, His teams have averaged 10 points per game. He's completed 55% of his passes, zero touchdowns, two interceptions over three games in his career against Georgia. Like we're not, we're not talking about a one game sample size here. We're talking three games. He's the, the kind of, quarterback that that George is just going to eat alive forget the fact that it's in Atlanta forget all the other variables I, I I just think if it was literally any other quarterback you could talk me into this being competitive but we know who he is he had the coach that was supposed to get him under control and disciplined a year ago in Brian Harson. he was the same dude he's reckless he's going to have a bad turnover at the worst possible time so I, I think Georgia wins and I'll say this from the Georgia perspective too right and I think this is where AM is trying to get in a year or two. You know, listen, you want a national championship, that's incredible. No one will ever take it away from you. But right, you want to if you want to be there every year, what does Bama do? Doesn't matter who they lose, they just move on to the next year and they're right back at it. All right. So today, do not tell people what to do. Well. Don't tell them to what's the first thing I, you I would, would not tell. I would never tell them. tell them to like, share, subscribe, comment. You wouldn't either, right? Never. I'd have to pay attention more to do that. Who's gonna have the best weekend of the of the group here? Hunter. Yeah, he's going to have fun. Yes. I'm working. Yeah, You're sure. going to be at a soccer tournament. You're yeah, going to sure. be hopefully partying. I yeah, don't know. well, I mean, you know, he's he's the empty nester. He gets to do whatever he wants to do. He's got the tailgate spot. Yeah. All right, it's Tech Rewind. See you guys next time.